Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we're talking about the multi-armed bandit problem. Don't you just love these names when they come up such cool names for machine learning algorithms and problems? Well, today we're indeed talking about this problem and it is the example that we're going to be using in this whole section on reinforcement learning. We're going to be looking at different ways that we can solve the multi-arm bandit problem and comparing the results. Um, but before we continue, I just wanted to mention that the multi-arm bandit problem is not the only problem that can be solved with reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is actually really, really cool. Reinforcement learning, for instance, is used to train robot dogs to walk. And I'll give you a quick example. For instance, uh, you can, once you've created a robot dog, you can implement an algorithm inside the robot dog, which will tell it how to walk. You can tell it, all right, move your front right foot and then move your left back foot and then front left foot, right back foot and so on. You can actually give the sequence of actions that it needs to take in order to accomplish a task, which is walking. Or you can implement a reinforcement learning algorithm, which will train the dog to walk uh, in a very, very interesting way. So basically what it will do is it will say, hey dog, here are all the actions you can take. You can uh, move your legs like this, you can move your legs like that, and um, your goal is to make a step forward. Every time you make a step forward, you are uh, given a reward. Every time you fall over, you're uh, given a punishment. And a reward is basically a one. In the algorithm, you don't actually have to give it a carrot or a, you know, something uh, to eat. You just give it a one in the algorithm and a punishment is a zero. And basically every time it takes a step forward, it knows it's got a reward and it will, um, yes, that's good for it. So it basically will try all these random sets of actions and see what they lead to. Every time it takes a step forward, it'll remember that those were good actions and it'll try to repeat them more and more. And actually dogs like that can learn to walk. Uh, so you don't have to program an, an actual walking algorithm into it. It'll figure out the steps it needs to take on its own. The, I think that's really mind blowing and really cool. Uh, but unfortunately that is a, a more, uh, a topic more of on the side of artificial intelligence rather than mach just machine learning. And that is, uh, you know, that can be a whole course on its own. We're not going to delve into. Uh, training robot dogs to walk inside this section. Inside this section, we are going to talk about the multi-armed bandit problem, which is a bit of a different application of uh, this machine learning branch of reinforcement learning. And plus, of course, there's other, uh, lots of other applications of reinforcement learning as well. So, moving on to our multi-armed bandit uh, problem. So, first of all, what on earth is a multi-armed bandit, right? So the first thing that comes to mind is like a robber going into a bank and so on and, uh, or, or somebody with a gun. But actually a, um, a bandit or a one-armed bandit, let's start with, <laughs> let's simplify things. A one-armed bandit is a slot machine, right? It's one of these. And, uh, why is it called a warm one-armed bandit? Well, it's got a bit of a, History there, um, back in the day, they used to have this uh, handle on the right, and you can still see that in movies, and maybe some places you can still find these slot machines where you actually have to pull the handle because now they're all electronic and you just press a button, right? They're push mach push slot machines. Whereas in the, back in the day, you had to pull the a lever uh, to make it work, to like initiate uh, the, the game. And uh, so the, hence the arm, yeah? But why is it called a bandit? Well, because uh, these machines, they would actually, you know, these are, this is the, one of the quickest way to lose your money in, uh, in a casino. They, they would take, um, I think it was like a 50% chance that they would take away your money back in the day. So they would, of course, you would earn less than your, um, you're actually winning and it was about a, you know, a 50, 50 chance whether you or not, you actually make a, uh, you get a win or you, you lose money, but then they put a bug into them. I think I read up a little bit online. They put a bug into them that people who were playing them were losing even faster than, uh, or even more frequently than 50%. So hence the name bandit because it was basically robbing you of your money. And, um, you know, one of the quickest way to ways to lose your money. 
Hence the multi, oh, that's a, why it's called the one arm bandit. Um, and what is the multi arm bandit? Well, the multi, multi arm bandit problem is kind of the challenge that a person is faced when he comes up to a whole set of these machines when he doesn't have just one, he has like five or 10. Uh, in our programming examples, we'll have an uh, example of uh, 10, but we won't be talking specifically about these machines. Of course, this is, this is the historic problem. Uh, you'll just now, we'll see that there are many, many other applications, uh, that, uh, even though it's called the multi-arm bandit problem, it's actually, uh, used to solve any, many other problems as well. So, uh, basically here you're faced with a challenge. You've got five of these machines, right? And, uh, how do you actually play them to maximize your return? Um, from the the number of games that you can uh, actually play so you've you know you decided you're going to play you know a hundred times or a thousand times um and you want to maximize your return how do you figure out which ones of them to play um in order to maximize your returns well uh, the problem you know, to describe the problem in more detail we've got to mention that uh, the assumption here is that each one of these machines has a distribution behind it so there's a distribution uh, of numbers out of which or outcomes out of which the machine uh, picks results right so uh, it has it has sort of like each one of these machines has its own distribution and it picks out a result you you pull the trigger and, and it just picks out randomly out of its distribution a result an outcome you know whether you win or whether you lose and how much you win and how much you lose um, well, basically you lose the same amount you just put in the coin. Uh, but basically it tells you whether you win or lose based on the distribution that's built into the machine. But the problem here is that you don't know these distributions, right? You don't know in advance what the distributions are and they are assumed to be different for these machines. Sometimes they can be similar or the same uh, in some of the machines, but by, by default, they are different. And, uh, your goal is to figure out which of these distributions is the best one for you. So um, let's have a look. So there are these distributions, right? So for example, uh, we've got these five machines, the five distributions. And as you can see right away, just by looking at this, which is the best machine right away? Um, obviously the one on the right, the orange one is the best machine because it's got the best, um, you know, it's the most left skewed uh, left skews because the tails on the left. So it's, it's got the most favorable outcomes. It's got the highest mean, median and mode. And you, uh, if, if you knew these distributions in advance, you would obviously just go to the fifth machine and you would bet on the mach fifth machine, just on the fifth machine all the time because, um, it's got the best distribution, right? So on average, you would get the best results, but you don't know that you don't know that in advance. And your goal is to figure out, you know, this is like a, it's like a mind game. You know how there's all these movies about, uh, machine learning and uh, really cool or ma cool mathematics and how they're, uh, using it. They're cool. A uh, really good movie was, um, imitation game, right? Uh, about Alan Turing and, uh, and, uh, and how he was solving the enigma and so on. But uh, a similar kind of concept. You don't know which one of these is the best. You got to figure it out. But at the same time, you are already spending your money doing this, right? You can't just, uh, you know, the longer you take to figure it out, there's, there's a trade off, right? The longer you take to figure it out, the, uh, more money you will probably spend on the wrong ones. Um, and therefore you have to figure out very quickly. So there are these two factors that are in play, exploration and exploitation. So you need to explore the machines to find out which one of them is the best one. And at the same time, you need to, as soon as you can already start exploiting, uh, exploiting these machines, exploiting your findings to make the maximum return. So basically, and, and there's another mathematical concept you find behind all of this, which is called regret. And a regret is like, is mathematically defined. And if you want to read more about this, there's a goal, uh, there's a really good white paper on it. It's called, uh, uh, using confidence bounds for exploitation and exploration trade-offs. And it is by, uh, Peter A. Oyer or A U E R from Graz University of Technology in Austria. Um, really like the white paper. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail. I, like I didn't even read the whole thing, but the first couple of, um, chapters are pretty good if you want to go into detail. But basically regret is, um, is when 
is suffered when you're using a non-alternative method, not optimal method, right? So the one on the right is the optimal, uh, or the one on the right is the optimal machine. Whenever you're using the non-optimal machine, you have a regret, which which can be quantified as uh, like uh, as the difference between the uh, best outcome and the non-best outcome, and the uh, you know all of those sums of the money that you put, uh, like your um, opportunity cost of actually exploring the other machines. And uh, so, the longer you explore the non-optimal machines, the higher regret. But at the same time, if you don't explore for long enough. Right. If you explore, if you don't explore for long, long enough, then your and a suboptimal machine might come, might appear as an optimal machine. So, for instance, uh, this machine over here. Right. So, if we explore, 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 but we don't spend enough time exploring, we might think that this is the best machine because it's got quite a good return. Right. Close to this one, and we might start exploiting this one for the rest of the time. But then in reality, we this one was the best one. So the the our goal is to find the best one and exploit the best one, uh, but spend the me the least amount of time exploring all of them, right? And while you're exploring, you're still earning money, but not from the optimal machine, right? So that's the goal. That's the point uh, of this whole exercise. And it's important to understand here that um, there is the best one. So that it, we're, even though these machines, you know, they um, have like jackpots sometimes and so on, but we are assuming that there's just, that these distributions are, um, finite there and out of them, there is a best one that you are looking for. That's kind of the, uh, pre-emphasis or the whole assumption of this problem. If, uh, there are, there are more complex options and versions of this problem. And, uh, again, uh, check out uh, some additional, reading on that topic that's that's more even more advanced but what we're going to be using this for is that's going to be sufficient and why is that going to be sufficient for us because the most common modern application of this that we can uh, think of and the one that we are going to be exploring is advertising voila so let's have a look at some ads it's going to be fun so just a, a disclaimer this there's no affiliation with coca-cola examples are used just for educational purposes all right so let's have a look um we have let's say coca-cola or some company wants to run a campaign uh, and it's going to be called welcome to the coke side of life campaign and if you search for this campaign online you'll see that they had you know hundreds of different ads that they came up with uh, for this campaign and here's here's one example of them where these are just some images i pulled from google so maybe these are even drawn by uh people but we're going to assume that these are legitimate ads that um, we're going to go into the campaign. And so we want to find out which is the best ad, which is the ad that works the best. So we've got options. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And so now our goal is to uh, find out which ad works the best or maximize our returns. But right now we don't know which ads work the best, right? So there's not, there is a distribution behind it, but uh, that distribution will only become known after thousands and thousands and thousands of people ch look at these ads and click or not click on these ads. And this is actually going to be very similar to the example that we're going to be looking at, the example that Hadlan's going to be walking you through in the programming tutorials. In that example, we're actually going to have 10 ads, so even more. And so the, wh what can you do here? Well, one way to approach the problem is just run an A-B test, right? So uh, take your five or 50 or 500 ads and run a huge A-B test uh, with or multiple A-B tests and um, wait until you have enough uh, of a uh, large enough sample uh, and then uh, conclude which ad is the best, right? With, with certain confidence. But the problem with that is that you would spend a lot of time and money doing that, right? So an A-B test is pure exploration, right? You're not exploiting the best option. You are exploiting the best option, but uh, to the same extent as you're exploiting the non-optimal options, right? So if uh, if we go by our previous distributions, if this is the best one, if you just run an A-B test, then you're uniformly distributing or you're uniformly using these uh, five options. And therefore, um, as much as you're using this one, you're not using all four, all four of them. So basically all, all five of them. So basically you are exploiting it a bit, but un, unconsciously, right? In a random way. Uh, and therefore A-B tests are just for exploration. So the, the challenge is to find out which is the best one, but uh, do it while you're explore, uh, while you're 
no, to exploit the best one while you're exploring for it, right? So find out which one is the best one in the process of, um, hold on, <laughs> find, find out which is the best one in the process of the actual launched campaign. So not, don't have two phases, you know, do the A-B test and then use the most, the best one, uh, but actually find out the best one in the quickest way possible and start exploiting it along the way. So that's the challenge here, and that's what we're going to be solving. Um, and that's the modern application of the multi-armed bandit problem. So hopefully you're excited about this. We've got two great algorithms coming up. Uh, can't wait to get started. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. And until then, enjoy machine learning.